All right, let's get started. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Additions to the agenda, I hope that we don't have any because we already have a long meeting ahead of us. Good, we don't. Chair's remarks. <coughs> My remarks are, we have a long meeting ahead of us, so if you're here <laughs> to speak, please do it efficiently. Um, guests, Joanne from Senior Solutions, come up and talk to us, please. Thank you. Please feel free to have a seat. Actually. Yeah, you can sit up there if if you like, right there behind the mic, if that's easier. Yeah, it's Looks like you got props. Here. Only because I can't really see everybody from behind the podium. Thank you. Hi, Joanne Aaron House from Senior Solutions, and thanks for having me tonight. And no, I won't read all of this because you have a long meeting. But um, I just wanted to make sure that I connect with your community because Senior Solutions does serve Wyndham and Windsor County. And sometimes it's hard to let everybody know the different services that we can help them connect to and different things we can help with simply because there are just so many towns and we're all in a pretty rural area. So I appreciate this opportunity. Um, I guess the first thing I should do is give a pr pretty brief overview of what we do. Um, we basically are the Southeastern Vermont Council on Aging. So in that capacity, we are mandated by the Older Americans Act, which is a federal act, to serve people who are over 60. And um, we're also part of the V4, VAAA or V4A uh, group of councils on aging for the state of Vermont. So we have certain rules I guess rules and roles that we have to perform according to those statutes. So what we do primarily is help anyone over 60 or anybody who has a disability. You don't have to be an aging Vermonter to receive many of the services and programs that we're able to connect you to. We offer SHIP counseling, which is the state health insurance plan. A lot of people need that insurance. Many of them don't understand it. So we have a very uh, capable staff person who is happy to explain it and help people select the right carrier, whether it's MVP, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and get the right plan that suits their medical and economic needs. Um, we also help the Aging Vermonters access the Three Squares program. This is a program that helps with nutrition, helps them buy food, things like that. And if you are a, a, an aging Vermonter who qualifies for three squares and you live with family members who have children in the household, those children are also entitled to additional services and meals at school. So it really helps the whole family. And one of the programs we're happy to carry on this year is the, um, the Crop Cash. This is a program that at the farmers markets and your, I guess one of your local farmers markets would be Brattleboro. Uh, they do participate in this. So anybody who has a three squares card or something like that, they can go to the farmers market, go to the kiosk, show them the card. They'll take $10 off the card and in return give the person $20 worth of chips to spend at the farmers market that day. So whenever you go to the farmer's market, if you go every week, at the end of the month, you've got an extra $40 worth of fresh fruit and vegetables in your home for your family. That's a really important thing because so many of our aging Vermonters are actually um, very nutritionally deprived. So that's really ex exciting. And we'll actually go into the home when we get a call from uh, somebody who needs help our case managers will actually go into the home to do an assessment and help them figure out what they are you know what they are able to access for services and we won't just throw applications at them 
we'll take the three squares application, for example, which is several pages long. You need a lot of documents to substantiate what your income is and is not. We'll let you know ahead of time, and we'll go and help you fill the form out. Make sure that it gets mailed in, com completed, because if it's not complete or you're missing a document, you'll be rejected and have to wait a long time to, to reapply. So we do help in accessing programs. If you think about it, it's very sensible. If we're servicing the older population in Vermont and they need to f get some assistance, which they deserve, if you just mail an application to someone like that, say it's the winter time, well, they wouldn't have called if they were able to get out and get the assistance. And many of these people can't even get out to get to their mailbox in the winter. So you're really not helping them. So we do follow up on all the referrals and we track people and make sure that if they have applied for a program that they actually get approved and if not, why not? And we will check back with them periodically to see if they're now eligible for other programs like fuel assistance and uh, you know, long-term Medicaid care, things like that. Uh, we also provide um, some caregiver, family caregiver respite. Uh, a lot of people are very hardworking taking care of one of their family members. And one of the problems in doing that is that 24-7 is an exhausting job. And we realize that. And we know that one problem which le can lead to elder abuse is when the caregivers get tired and frustrated and angry, who do they take it out on? So we want to make sure that if somebody's getting burned out, uh, they come to us and if we st have the funds available, which we have our own funds that we can give some small respite grants to, which means we will pay someone else to come in and watch your loved one while you get away and recharge your battery. Um, we also have the um, Christopher Grant I'm oh, sorry, Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation for some uh, respite grants for people who are caring with both of Alzheimer patients. So these are important programs to ensure the safety of the person who is being taken care of, but to also provide resources and support for the caregivers who need it very much. Um, we do not deliver and we do not provide Meals on Wheels or congregate meals. However, we do administer those programs. We are mandated by the state to have a nutritionist who oversees the menus, and we try to work together with our congregate meal sites to enhance and support what they do. And I have to say, today I was up in uh, Woodstock at the Thompson Senior Center, which I hadn't been to before, and talking to the person who actually runs their Meals on Wheels program, and I couldn't tell her how excited and proud I am of the Meals on Wheels drivers, who, by the way, in Vermont are generally, the average age, I found out, for their drivers is 70. Um, so they're dedicated volunteers. And many times, especially in the winter, when people are homebound, and in the winter it's even harder, they become very isolated, very lonely, very often depressed, which can lead to self-neglect, and it also makes them vulnerable to scams and financial ex exploitation. So the Meals on Wheels drivers are often the only people that they see on a regular basis throughout the winter. And you know they're kind of our boots on the ground. So if they see an aging Vermonter who's got no food in the refrigerator, even though they supposedly have a caretaker, or unusual bruising, or have lost weight, or seem nervous, these are wonderful tip-offs that should be reported so that we, APS, police departments, can all follow up and do the appropriate intervention because our main concern is to keep the aging Vermonter safe. Um, and we're working right now on a three-year grant program from the Department of Justice to educate and intervene and prosecute uh, elder abuse, all forms of it. Believe it or not, there's a lot of domestic and sexual abuse that goes on with elders. Um, there's financial abuse, mental abuse, all kinds of abuse, emotional abuse. Have you ever heard someone be threatened that they're going to be sent to a nursing home? It happens a lot, and unfortunately, in Vermont, partly because of our rural atmosphere, only about 5% 
of the elder abuse cases are even reported. So we're trying to educate the public. We're starting out in Windsor County, a three-year grant program. Uh, we're training multidisciplinary teams to go to the local police, sheriffs, fire departments, hospitals, all different agencies. We're working with um, Upper Valley Wise. We're working with uh, aging agencies. Uh, police, we're working with the State Police Academy. Uh, we're working with many, many different entities because by looking at this situation from different perspectives, we're better able to work together, streamline the responses, create community response teams, and, in, and decrease the amount of trauma that the victim <coughs> will experience. So we have a lot to do. Um, at the end of this month, we're actually taking our victim services team, which includes one of the administrators from APS. We're taking one of the uh, main administrators from WISE, and we're taking um, one of the Windsor County SIU department's uh, victim services person, So and myself. So we're going to go and get more training and bring that back to the rest of the team that we've already trained, which was the law enforcement contingent. So we have a lot to do, but with the public's help, we are determined that elder abuse will not be a lingering blight on aging Vermonters' lives. Um, we have visiting programs for the homebound. We participate with the federal program, which is the Senior Companion Program. So an aged, aging Vermonter who's already on Social Security at reduced income can receive a stipend and mileage for spending 15 hours a week volunteering with another senior who is not mobile and can get out of the house. We have friendly visitors, and right now we're putting together a vet-to-vet -vet visitor program to connect vets, and it's based on a highly successful program that's been active in Maine. They've let us use everything, including their graphics. So we're adapting it right now with the help of the uh, VFW and the American Legion so that we can get uh, vet input. Oh, oh, wait, it wasn't me. <laughs> we want vet input on the structuring of this program, and that'll be up and running fairly soon. Um, we also have wellness programs which includes Tai Chi, uh, movement, falls prevention, and things like that, as well as nutrition. We have a Medicare boot camp, which uh, is going to be held June 14th from 1 to 3, July 17th from 1 to 3, August 22nd from 3 to 5. And basically, you're never going to remember all that, so call us at our helpline, which is, what can I find it? I'll have to give it to you later. Oh. So I'll give you that before I leave. Um, call the helpline or call Senior Solutions because we can definitely help with that. We have Patty, who is an expert in Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and she will be able to help anybody navigate those systems. So if you want to call the Senior Helpline, call 800-642-5111. They are the portal to all the services that we can provide. Our services are free. All the programs that we offer are free. Um, so just if you have a question about anything regarding an aging Vermonter or some kind of problem that you think would affect them, give us a call. Um, we don't need an advisory council from Vernon because I believe we have one. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you're one of the terrific advisory council members who help us. Um, let's see, what else can we do? I think that I've covered a lot of territory. I'll leave some brochures for Choices for Care, which is an incredible program Medicaid's paid for as an alternative to nursing home care. Not that nursing homes are bad, but nobody really ever wanted for the rest of their life wishing to go to a nursing home. It's an alternative. Medicaid will pay a relative, a neighbor, a nurse, like a Bayada or VNA, to come into the home and care for the person according, uh, according to the hours of the week that has been clinically approved. So this enables them to stay in their home but receive the kind of care they could get at a nursing home. They just have to be clinically evaluated so that they cannot perform <coughs> two out of the four or five basic fat, uh, daily functions that 
are normally able to be done. Um, what else? I'm going to wrap it up because you guys have been very patient and you have other people who want to talk. Um, so if you have any questions, once again, you can call the helpline and that is 800-642-5119. And they'll be happy to hook you up with anybody in our office who will be more than delighted to help. Thank Great. You. Thanks, Joy. Thank you. Open public comments, non-agenda items. Seeing none. Department reports. Treasurer Cindy Turnley, come on up. We got a couple of things it looks like for us to talk about. Hi. Um, Good evening. I do have to tell you, Gordon is not coming tonight. He was told he didn't need to. Yeah, I told him he didn't need to. Just so you know, I saw his name on the agenda, so. Um, I'm going to pass this you want to take one and pass it down. This is the final cost for the septic pump, pump replacement. The total amount that it cost us was $6,149.26. The insurance paid $2,259.39. So the remaining cost is to the, the, for the town is $3,889.87. Um, the, the reason the insurance company paid that, they only paid for the cleanup of the water. They did not pay for the pump because they said it's wear and tear, it's oh, old. Yeah. So I just wanted to give you those figures. Thank you. And then the next thing is, um, I did anybody have a question about that? No, okay. Um, the next thing is, is that I had my workers comp audit. Um, we have it every year in May. And as you all may recall, um, last year, we were advised by the auditor that Vermont had ruled that subcontractors by law must carry workers' compensation on their employees, but they do not have to carry it on themselves. There was a checklist of independent contractor documentation that had to be completed in full if the owner opts out of carrying workers' compensation on themselves. This year, that's changed a bit. Following this year's workers' comp audit, I was advised that subcontractors we hire to do municipal, municipal functions, um, which are, for example, mowing, plowing, janitorial services, gardening, recreation, etc., fall into a different category. While VLCT still gives us the option of whether or not we want to hire subcontractors that fall into this category and they do not have workers' compensation, VLCT will begin charging us for risk exposure. Additionally, if the person gets hurt and files a claim, the likelihood that our premiums are going to increase for the next couple of years after that are extremely high. So they gave me three options. Um, the first option is we continue as we are and pay for risk exposure. As an example of what that would cost, um, we had someone, I just used someone from last year. Um, that we paid someone $3,135 for plowing um, that amount, the amount we would pay for risk exposure on that one person would be $314.75. Our second choice is we can require them to carry work, workers' compensation, and if they opt, opt out, we can release them from their contract with, you know, no penalty or anything. Um, secondly, or third, lastly, we could pay them through payroll, in essence making them employees of the town. The additional cost for FICA and METI would be $239.38, a decrease of $74.92 over the first option, which would be to pay the risk exposure. Um, VLCT advised that the best protection would be to have them provide their own insurance as it would completely remove, in most cases, liability from the town. So we have the following, um, we have seven people that work for us, or, or companies that work for us, that fall in these categories. Um, one of them, um, which is Howes Lawn Care, the employ their employees are covered under workers' comp. However, I spoke to their insurance company today, and the owner is not covered, so he could not mow without workers' comp. Or we'd have to pay for the risk exposure. So I have all the seven names. Um, of the people, and I, I just need, I, I'm going to give you a copy of all this so you all have the information um, to look at, but we, ha we sort of have to decide what we want to do. 
Um, and the second page of that is just an example of the checklist of individual contract documentation. I just should enclose that. Um, now, we also have people that do non-municipal municipal functions, which are specialized functions such as electricians, plumbers, painters, masons, and roofers. Um, these people would be evaluated by VLCT on a case-to-case -case basis um, to determine whether or not they would need workers' compensation, but all of the paperwork for the independent contractor documentation would have to still be completed in full. So those people in the specialized functions are different. They're basically we would have to know, uh, contact VLC, I would have to contact VLCT and explain to them what the situation was and they would let me know what the requirements would be. But the other people, the ones that do what they call munici municipal functions, um, which are functions that we could employ someone to do, um, and I, I, I gave the list up there, those are the ones that we have to deal with um, what we want to do with them. And that risk exposure is per person? That's not just a blanket for... No, it, that is, it goes by how much they make, and then there's a formula. They take the amount they made, and they figure it with a formula. So that 3,014.75 is for someone that, I mean, that 314.75 is for someone that made 3,135. So it's based on mm -hmm. what they make. And so each individual would have their own amount depending on what they made. And that would be charged to us at the end of the of the year. The the uh, the um, second option is, uh, I mean, the third option is the one where you you could pay them through workers' comp, and the only additional cost to us would be, they would be, I mean, we would pay them through payroll, and they would fall under workers' comp because they'd be considered employees, and the only additional cost then would be the amount for FICA and Medi that this, the town would have to pay. So. Um, it's it's less than paying for the risk exposure, but it's still at an additional charge. The easiest solution is to ask everybody to have liability insurance. And if you don't have it, well, then it you has don't workers' work for comp it. insurance. Yeah, that's what I mean. And maybe we change some of our providers. Yeah. Our what? Some of our, maybe we change some of our providers based on that. Oh, absolutely. So, well, yeah, maybe if, if they can't come, I mean, we have to give them the option, you know, we could send them out letters and say, due to changes in our insurance policies, yeah. we are now required that you carry workers' compensation. We would have to do this immediately, especially for, I mean, some of these people are winter people, so we have a little leadway, but yeah. people like um, um, House Lawn Care, who are When is this ruling going to effect? It's in effect now. I found out, and I just found out. Um, I got my results from my audit back, and she advised that it, it was it went in, it's in effect immediately. Okay. So does this mean if we if someone gets a bid to replace the, the roof, they have to provide workers' comp? No, that, not necessarily. That that's those are the ones that fall under a case to case basis. So we would have to find out ahead of time who they are and what exactly what they're going to do. I would contact my um, person at VLCT and explain the situation, and they would advise what we need to have, what they need to provide. Wow. It seems like being a member of VLCT <coughs> is less and less useful. <laughs> oh. But anyway. The, that other thing that you mentioned, the um, penalty thing. The risk exposure? Yeah. Yeah. Could. The contractors pay the town the money for the risk exposure? I suppose that would be an option. They could. They probably could, but that still leaves us liable. And right. I don't want that, the liability. Right. Oh. Then they could pay for the risk exposure, but then if there was a claim filed, um, we the town would be liable for that. Yeah. So. I um, send letters. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Jeff, what do you think? Sorry. Everybody in agreement <coughs> that everybody needs to provide their own liability insurance, and if they can't do that, then they don't work for the workers town. Comp. Sorry, yeah. workers' comp. I agree. Now, just to reiterate, this is not a, a Vermont state law. It's the VL. It's our insurance. Who is? Oh. It's this is specific to municipalities. 
this ruling is specific to mis municipalities because they don't want to take the risk. I have a feeling that we're going to lose contractors. Where, I mean, I have a hard time finding people to do anything based on the insurance issues we have now. If we add this on here, this is, with, it's going to be With Hounds Lawn Care, just, though, that's just one person that can't. Unfortunately, the owners. Work, workman's compensation is ex much higher than when they do a, when they get it on their employees, and that's right, but, one reason why the they opt not. Employees could have. still do the employees still work, work, but they could correct. Not. Okay. But we would have to make it perfectly clear that he would not be allowed to do. We're it. not going to have anybody to shovel our snow. Next, mm -hmm. I, I can guarantee that right now. True, do we got plenty of town employees? <laughs> You're sorry, sorry, but sorry be careful, careful there. <laughs> can't afford to keep paying more and more people and more How and more liability. How expensive is workers' comp insurance? Um, I looked into one case um, and the amount was for just liability insurance was $558 and with with uh, workers' comp added to that it was $1,900. So it is expensive. So um, and, and a lot of people that have employees that by the way, if they have employees, we should not be, um, it was reiterated to me, we should not be hiring any company that has employees that are not covered under workers' compensation because it is the law. Right. So, but it, but it is not the law for the owners, but it is what the LCT wants us to do because it protects us. And bear in mind that we're in a big pool with a, a bunch of municipalities, so they figure the rates each year based on how many claims they have. So. We affect everybody. We don't just affect ourselves. But we were re we like requiring workman's comp for the last two years, as far as I know. Everybody that we hire, right? No, none of the uh, none of the people on the, the list have workers' comp. Right? No, their employees are all covered. Maybe not the owners, Correct, but, but I, as far as I know, there was everybody one that we, that we discussed before that right. does not cover his employees, and we told and him we fixed it. Yeah, we told him he they couldn't work for us. Right. So we have been doing that. The last couple of years. For the employees, yes. <coughs> this isn't the, the owners having to have it is a mandated by the BLCT, not by the state. So, if you put all of these together, that earned what would it cost the town to have put them through the um, work, the payroll? Well. I'd have to yeah. get all their dollar, yeah. how much they made and everything, and tell you. What I mean, if we're not going to have, we need to have the work done. Right. We can find people that carry the proper insurance. It's not that difficult. Okay. You have to let you know tonight. No. Because I mean, we're, I, that's not, why we're, I gave we're not the, the only paper. town that's dealing with this right, right now. Basically, every town is is a VLC team team every member because they have to be. Right. So this is another way for them to squeeze more money out of towns and that kind of thing, which is what they do. Right. That's, that's why I provided you the information so, so you could review it. So how about if you and I talk about this? Because this is the first I've heard of it. So yeah. how about if you and I talk about? this yeah. in the mm -hmm. coming sure. weeks. I just got I can bring something back yeah, to the select board as solutions. We'll table it until the next meeting and no, let I the chips I didn't expect the answer tonight. I just wanted to provide you with the information. Yep. Thank you That's very great. much. Yes, thank you. So, so we will can move we get an answer forward. on that for the next meeting with that? What it yes. For all of them. Yes, you can. Okay. You also have to remember that taking on their payroll increases resources that we need in town to right. write their checks and mm -hmm. do all that kind of thing which is also not something that we want to do so I think the first thought of forcing everybody to have the proper insurance is the best one but anyway we'll move on Gordon came in and explained to us the rebalancing of the cemeteries. I'm not sure why this line item is still on here. Does anybody have questions about what Gordon explained to us? Well, you had asked me to put it on the, this agenda because <coughs> this we didn't have any word from Cindy about what he was saying. Okay, so, so are you there was clear about yes. what's going on? I know I know what's going on. Perfect. Um, 
what he's trying to do is keep them in the same funds, but diversify them into different areas of the same funds? Yeah, he came and explained it to us. Great. Well, so we're all set, I think. Yeah. Well, I think it's because last meeting the cemeteries were not on the agenda. Yeah. I didn't get an okay from Cindy before yeah. the last well, meeting. Well, when so I talked to, to Gordon, sure. he told me he was going to meet with the cemetery committee and discuss this with him, and was I okay with him doing that? And I said yes, and then Michelle asked, said that he brought it to you guys, yep. and that there was some confusion, Michelle thought, that, that he was moving them into different funds. I didn't get any okay from you or any right. information from well, you, so that's... So are you okay with it? I am okay with it. Okay, so we need to make it's a motion to approve basically the rebalancing of the cemetery accounts. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the rebalancing of the cemetery accounts. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So we're good there. Um, the other thing why we have you up here is the fireworks are listed number four on new business. Um, we have funds coming July 1st that would cover fireworks for June 30th. Yeah. I understand that you have concerns about paying the invoice that gets here on July, after June 30th mm -hmm. with that money. I do because that money that was voted on at this last meeting is for next year. It's not mm -hmm. for this year. You cannot pay from one fiscal year what, something that happened in a prior or future fiscal year. Okay. So we have to decide as a select board whether we want to overexpend that line item knowing that we have the money literally the very next day. But you don't. But it becomes the, yeah, we do. No, Where does the money go? It goes for the next town meeting, town picnic, not for this town picnic. Yeah, but we can carry it over as an expense. Not, no, you can't. You, you don't understand what I'm saying. Well, can you? So anyway, so we need to decide whether we want to overexpend the line item or this year or not have fireworks this year and have them next year. That's the end of the conversation. You either overextend the line item this year and then don't have fireworks, or you overextend it this year and have fireworks. I frankly could care less at this point. <laughs> what you have available right now for fireworks is $2,077. So does anybody have any thoughts on that? No, is that with with everything that's come in this year and, and stuff that was left over from prior years? But that's so what's come in this year so far? Six hundred and fifty dollars. So I know that we've got at least another five hundred coming in. Thanks to donations from both North Star and Great River. North Park. Star is one of the five hundred. Right. One of the 650. Right. And, and so you Great River Hydro is also coming in. With 500. Yes. So, thanks to them, we have I'll another. Put 400. What's that? <clears throat> I'll put in 400. Well, one way or the other, we don't have enough nice. to do it this year. That's the beginning and end. Do we have to do success? I'm still writing that down, Cam. Write it down. Do we have to do success in dollars worth? No, but I'm not going back and forth with these people anymore. So if somebody wants to, if somebody else wants to take this on and and jerk around with Atlas about every time we want to change a dollar amount, you're more than welcome. We're either going to do it full bore this year, or we're not going to do it at all. You need at least five thousand dollars to do a fireworks display. Yeah. Otherwise, last year otherwise it was it's pointless. six. At town meeting, they voted to kind of bring it up to that level that we could do one, and I. You know, just being there, I think the impression was that that would be this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not. And at this point, you can't have a four thousand. If we do a four thousand dollar firework display, it's going to be very disappointing. May I make a suggestion? If you move the fireworks from June into July, you'd be all set. Correct. You're right. If they had the uh, available date. <laughs> To do so. Okay. The postponement date is July 1st. There you go. Pray for rain. Pray for rain. <laughs> <laughs> or snow, one or the other. 
And the reason that there is no money right now because the town didn't vote for any money That's for this right. year. Correct. So there is that point. Right. The, last year they did not vote for any for this year that we're yeah. in now. Yeah. So if they can have a postponement date of July 1st, why can't they do a display date of July 1st? I don't know. Why don't you call them and ask? <laughs> I will do that. Because I am out of the fireworks game. <coughs> July 1st is a Sunday. Just so you know, we need to let them know what we are doing very, very soon. Maybe yeah. you should call them. <laughs> no, you've got nothing to play. I can give them a call. So we, uh, am I, so when I call them, am I asking them if they can move it to July 1st? Remember, our picnic is already scheduled for the 30th. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't have the money to do it on the 30th, I'm... Let's set them off at 1201. I am your messenger. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, Chris. <laughs> it's July 1st somewhere. <laughs> We're not burning for our Mondays. <coughs> I just want to know what message on. Um, anything? <laughs> I'm calling them to ask what. I say we postpone it to next year. It doesn't make any sense to to have a town picnic and then do the fireworks the next day. That's just my opinion. Yeah, because you're actually spending. <laughs> you won't have any money next yeah. year either unless you put the fireworks into July. Exactly. Right. I, so I would think that sort of the townspeople spoke when they voted not to. Well, that's do what it. I yeah, it's their choice. Right. I mean, if anybody asked, we can just say then money wasn't voted in. It's right in the minutes. I, mean, I don't think it was actually on the article last year. It was. We haven't had an article for it for a few years. No. This so this was the first year that we had an article it for it. Down. They just they didn't have the. It article. wasn't even brought up. Put it in. Yeah, it wasn't put up there. How does that work with the donations that are there though? Because those donations were made under the impression that those were for this year. So we can we can do what, what we've done. We when there's money left over from prior years instead of we've kind we of kept track of it and carried it over. So we can do that with the donations, but you can't do is spend money from one I get that. I just I agree with Michelle that I think the assumption was that that was for this year. Now we have additional donations that were made for this year. And yes, we can carry that over, but that's not what those donations were made and for. And I would strongly suggest that well, some of those larger donations go back to the businesses that gave them, assuming that they were going to have fireworks this year. Or give them the option to. Or, uh, have uh, uh, yeah. To yeah. 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 But, yeah, I think that needs to be spelled out. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. No, I have no idea what to do. You're going to cancel. We're can so we're yep. we have a, we're canceling fireworks this year. Yep. Okay. Everybody in greens? Yes. Cross my name out. Okay. Thank you. No money. We are all set with you. I think. Okay. Dave, Thank you. highway bid for next year. Though. For next year? Yeah. Rich Thank Thank. We got fuel bit on the top. Yeah, that is. Seven bids went out and we got one back. <laughs> that's odd. I don't think that's ever happened. Well, not, well, not yeah, in the recent to past. Hustle. Five to ten years ago, we used to go through this. You just have one. And it's rack price other than what they're going to charge over per gallon for delivery. So, was this who did the fuel last year? Yeah. In the year before. I move to award the bid to the owner bidder, the only bidder. Second. 
Moved and seconded to uh, approve the Barrows and Fisher oil bid for uh, this year. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. <coughs> what else you got for us, Dave? Load a bid. We got three again. Can we get can we get the motion in the second okay. uh, minute to award it to the to the barrels? Who did the I made the motion. Who second? Jeff. Jeff second. Each one of these is just little things. One of them is not like the tires we're asking for, but it's nothing major. So you can go by either any of the ones you would like. So I feel the this is what we received for information, this bid, second bid process. Yep. This is what we received for information in January. In January, we received specs that were sent out as well as uh, returned specs from different machines. Uh, I move that we table this until we receive the specs and the replies back from the dealers. They're all right here. And uh, because we're getting them at the last minute, we're not going to make a decision tonight. Select board needs to make an informed decision. This is a hundred twenty thousand, one hundred sixty thousand dollar decision. I agree. I'll table to our next meeting. Is that everything? That's all you got for us, right? Were they the same bits that went out? Yep. The same specs? Yep. You get the no. same specs back, or is it different? Because there are different machines now that are available. I mean, the same, all of that is yep. still the same? Oh, it's a three yard bucket and added greaser. So the, the specs are different that you send out this time around versus January? Yeah, but it's the same spec sheet that went out. But they're different. The, but the sheet's the same, but they're different specs. Yeah, there's a two and a half yard bucket in January. It's three it's yard now. Right. And then there's an eight thousand dollar automatic uh, lubrication right. greaser that was added on to this time versus January. But it's the same. Other than that, it's the same. Okay. Well, we'll get copies. Because I went through everything it. to put everything in, so it would be yeah. close to bidding. Okay. Well, we'll get copies of it. And of. Uh, <clears throat> the main specs uh, to compare to January. What do we have the Sheriff's Department up on the Department and Committee and on the contracts? Are they here to talk to us about two different things? Uh, yes. Okay. Because they're going to talk about the differences that are going to happen. And we also have to sign a contract, which technically is new business. Okay. So we can move the contract up, but their chat with us is probably a little different than the contract. Okay. Well, let's get that done first then. Keith, and I'm not sure I know <laughs> who's with you, Keith. I'm Anthony French. I'm the station commander of the Westminster State Police Barracks. So, pursuant to the town's decision in March, to uh, go from essentially the 24 hour a day policing that we were providing down to 40 hours a week. Um, I felt it'd be beneficial to have Lieutenant French come to speak to you in the community at large about what the state police will be able to cover versus what you've received in the past for policing. Uh, it was brought up at the town meeting, it's brought up to people have called my office. And I figured it'd be best to let the state police speak on behalf of the state police versus me relaying to you what I believe they're going to provide. So 
Uh, if you don't mind, I would like Lieutenant French to speak uh, about what his agency will provide or, or <coughs> be able to provide. Absolutely. <coughs> Thank you. So um, the state police, if I don't know how much you're familiar with our the way we patrol and provide coverage versus a local police department, but we don't do things the same way. So we're spread out. We cover large land masses. Um, so we can't provide the same level of service that you're used to seeing by having a local PD or full-time sheriff's department. So I just wanted to make sure, I haven't spoken with anyone from the town, no one reached out to me, so I just wanted to make sure that you're aware and the community is aware that the policing services are going to change and that they aren't expecting the same level of coverage from after July 1st if this contract with the sheriff's department is um, decreasing. <clears throat> so some of the changes that, there's some of the things that we do differently, it, it's possible that you could go a day without seeing a trooper in town. Um, <clears throat> the we minor crashes we may not respond to, a, a deer car crash we may not respond to. Um, we don't do animal complaints, VIN verifications would probably most likely wait um, until someone was available. Just responses to normal, uh, active crimes in progress will be slower. Uh, we, we're short out of the barracks anyways. We're not increasing our staffing to help cover um, Vernon because you're not providing coverage anymore. So it's, it's not like we have more people to cover more areas. We have now, you know, less people to cover more areas. So. <clears throat> uh, being short at the barracks already with staffing, uh, it, it's going to be a challenge as it is. Uh, so we respond from wherever we are at, at any given time. Um, we don't do municipal ordinances. We do not respond to rescue calls for fire with fire departments. It's kind of a typical municipal response. Does that hold true in domestic and violent crimes as well? So obviously we would respond to emergencies. So when an emergency call comes in, we will respond. Um, but it's not, we don't have somebody in town that's going to be there within minutes. Like typical, we could be responding from um, several towns away. Obviously we'll get, we'll get this here as soon as we can. Um, but, you know, this is, the challenge that we face in rural Vermont with state police coverage. Understood. Any questions? So if, if you go at the board now, how big an area do you cover out of Westminster? Uh, so we cover from the Heartland-Windsor town line. So Windsor is in our area. Of course, they have their own full-time police department, so we don't. We usually just back them up for coverage. Um, <clears throat> down to the Mass Line, uh, Whitingham, Dover, all the way up through the Valley, um, into Peru, and Londonderry, and then Ludlow. So it's about 1,200 square miles. In on any given shift, how many troopers do you have on? Uh, our minimum staffing is five per shift. Um, with the number of people we're down right now, uh, looking at next month's schedule, or the, actually this month's schedule, probably three quarters of the shifts are at minimum staffing. And to let the board know, um, I've, I've met with, with uh, Anthony French and his counterpart of the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, Lieutenant Schmidt. Uh, because they're going to be handling the majority of like the major you know crimes uh, because of just the limited number of hours uh, the siu special investigative unit will be handling the sex assaults particularly sex assaults or domestic violence involving children again it's there's this fund that helps provide that um, so our intent is under this agreement is that we will provide day shift services monday through friday 7 30 to 3 30. We're not going to bury our shifts because it's easier for the state police to know that we're here set days and times. Um, it works better um, for the relationship between me and the state police. 
um, also um, it, it's a I think it provides the service that the town's looking for um, it also decreases the risk of overtime and extra cost for my office um, that we just cannot cover my other concern is this town has been used to 24-hour policing uh, I cannot provide 24-hour policing at 40 hours a week so I'm not going to move shifts around to try to meet what the town previously had so what kind of tentative schedule do you propose uh, 9 to 5 Monday through Friday or uh, Monday through Friday 7 30 in the morning to 3 30 in the afternoon will be the typical day hmm. um, that also comes out of uh, calls we received um, for folks worried about the the school children um, both when school is in session and when the school is not in session Yeah, I can. I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> Before April 1st, why was there three sheriffs on Triple all the time on Governor Hunt Road? Prior to April. Yeah. Because there's only one officer supposed to be on duty. And there was one on end of Governor Hunt Road, the other end of Governor Hunt Road, and one sitting in my parking lot. We all do. Weeks out of straight. Like, not just one night. I'm talking multiple weeks. That's why I closed my. Well, I'd, I would have to look, but we also provide hours to all the towns. I know, but like funding. multiple, over and over and over and over and over and over, and there's only supposed to be one officer on duty, and there's three all the time. At, no, it's uh, it's let's, let's, have this, let's have this. Let's have this discussion curious. offline, Cam. Okay, please. that's fine. We need to get through the business, yeah, the business of the town. If you want to have sure. that discussion, with I'm just curious. These gentlemen, you're more than welcome to do that. And I don't not give you guys due diligence because you do a great job, and you got to do what you do got to do. But I'm just curious in terms of the budget. And we can do it at a different time. That's fine. We have uh, any questions? You got questions? So uh, well, let's start with Chris. No, if Let's Jeff's got one, go ahead. No, I'm just curious again about the schedule. If it's uh, seven three, seven thirty to three thirty. Um, and <coughs> other towns that contract with you, that's the, the schedule that you provide to them, daytime? No. No, no so nighttime uh, one, or? One town right now is going to more of a day shift schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but again, none of the towns I currently provide services to uh, have ever had full-time policing, and that's my, my concern. So um, our approach will be to do it for one year this way and see um, what works and doesn't work it's, so, uh, i'm not going to vary shifts. i'm just curious how come vernon can't get several nighttime shifts why is it always a monday through friday daytime shift because this way the state police will also know when those calls come in that anything after that 3 30 afternoon will be their responsibility yeah but if you had some set nights they'd also know what the schedule would be too um, well i'm going to assign one person <coughs> down here and, and i'm not going to move his, his shifts around so we'll have one one person regular one the same Friday. person on a, on, on a regular schedule okay. and what are you guys still providing the full spectrum of law enforcement or are you switching over to just traffic what do you as it talks about in this in this contract we will provide um, all the services again we we won't have the resources to investigate the, the major crimes um, but even even where we're down here in right up to the end of this month those major crimes happen we still ask for BCI assistance just because they have the expertise and the resources to do that um, well the only thing that that will be different is we won't do animal control and that's true across all my contracts in the towns uh, what we will provide is if your animal control officer is worried about their his or her safety um, we will provide them support during the day um, same as if your health officer is doing, you know, it has to go to the home and do an inspection, we will go with them upon their request um, for, for safety purposes. And that is in the contract. Correct. Um, you know, the bin checks, all of that stuff we do during the day when it's appropriate to do them. Okay. Mike? What about people that work? Can you, uh, can you come to the mic? Yeah, that's okay. How about, I'm Michael from Vernon, how about people that work normal hours? Because all the hours talk about, I'm at work. How much to ever get a VIN check if I need one? 
So there are other ways to get a VIN check done. I mean, the state police, if it's on a, their schedule, um, they, you know, that trooper happens to be down here. If it's on their board, they may do it. Um, you know, we can look at the other, you know, there are other deputies around. If you call and we say, look, we can't, you very specifically, I, I work till five. You know, whether it's it's Captain Anderson who lives in the town may be able to do it on the way by, or I'm in town sorting paperwork, and I do that throughout the county. So there are other ways to get things like VIN checks done that don't would not be um, billed against this contract, and we do we already do that. You can go with Brad PD too. They'll do a VIN check. You can leave your paperwork in the car. That's what we do a lot of time. People leave their paperwork in the car. And I work at a post office. I leave my car locked. <laughs> Very little. Can you come up to the mic, please? We want to be able to hear you. I'm just wondering if the troopers will have access to the PD office the, or the sheriff's office down here when when they are here. We have <coughs> we have uh, computers in our cars, laptops with all the information we need, so we probably would not use the office. Okay, I was just wondering. So if I had. An RFA call here, I wouldn't have to go all the way to another town like I have. I could come here like I have been, but. And we won't have as much need for this, the amount of space. Um, in fact, the, I was just talking to the lieutenant on the way in. We've already started discussions like the breath testing equipment that's down here. There just won't be the same demand for it. Um, and it doesn't make sense to have that resource here, so we'll be contacting the lab to have them remove it. It's actually owned by the state. Um, and we have some electronic equipment that we had installed here that again we're going to be just working out of the car be nice to be able to have access to office space for interviews and follow-up but we certainly won't need the amount of space that you currently have, are supplying us, or providing so that, us that first office when you first walk in to the left that's is probably going to be the best new space there's not really access there's not really access to the other offices without going through that so no that's what i mean is that singular office can be become the office oh, just that one mm -hmm. oh, that's really and small. then the space in the back we can utilize for what we need but we don't own, we don't really own anything down there anymore mm -hmm. no. nope uh, you may have a you have a wi-fi router in there is that ours i know we have we had to put one in at one point but there may also be one in there but I can have Nancy. You uh, can Nancy have it. <laughs> we don't use it. So. I, don't, I don't mean any disrespect by this, but it seems that you try to almost use scare tactics sometimes when you're talking about this patrolling and, and budget. But you guys utilize Northfield and Bradbury quite a bit. Would they not be available during emergencies if you guys weren't here, if it was something serious? I find it hard to believe that, I mean, Bradbury has been down here and they've oftentimes gotten to a scene before your deputies have. Well, if we can back up one minute to your first statement or comment, I don't know what you mean by you scare tactics. Scare tactics. I mean, just the whole that we're not going to have anything here and things are going to happen and, and you're not willing to adjust schedules because, I mean, it, it just seems like you don't want to, because I don't think that's the way that this was addressed at town meeting that yes the hours were to be cut but it wasn't we want somebody Monday through Friday at those hours I mean we're going from a 20 hour a day contract which was kind of spanned all over the place and now you're saying that this is what I'm giving you and it is what it is well a lot I'll I don't think I ever used scare tactics. If it came across that way, I apologize. Um, and I would, in regard to other communities responding, depending on the type of emergency, they may. Those are conversations you'd have to have with Northfield, Burniston, and Brattleboro. Um, we back them up on calls. They back us up on calls, and the same with the, the state police. Um, that's one of the upsides of, of Vermont. We all go to the same academy. We have the same training. We all know each other. Um, so. Whether or not that will continue, those are conversations that you would have to have with those communities. Whether or not they're going to come here to become the primary responders versus backing up or going there to assist, that's a much different conversation to have. Um, 
I looked at this, um, and again, after speaking with the, the state police, um, as what would be the best way to, to manage this um, and reducing the confusion for the citizens to know that if they need a deputy to do those quality of life calls, that it's we're here Monday through Friday. Um, if it's the true emergencies, you know, the 911 calls, those all get funneled through the state police um, through the 911 system, um, and it just seems to make the best sense at this point. So with our rec department scheduled to open shortly and kids on Pond Road, you're out of town and that's just, I mean, I just don't think that that's the way that this was addressed at town meeting that we, yes, we're cutting the coverage, but we're going to a set schedule with you guys. I, I didn't say at town meeting one way or the other, how, what hours I was going to provide. You as a town decided that you were cutting me to 40 hours. And I told you what I would, what it would cost for you for that 40 hours a week, or 2,000 hours a year. Well, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Chair. Um, Monday through Friday, I think is kind of a low emergency hours, low crime rate. Um, I assume the state police uh, understand that they're going to respond to times when there's more emergencies and in higher crime rates. And again, I'm not sure that, as Chris stated, that at town meeting, uh, it was very clear to the people that this was a Monday through Friday contract. <clears throat> but it is what it is. You guys have been quiet. No, I mean, it, it's only 40 hours a week, so even if you stretch that over 70 day, seven days, that's very few hours every day. And I'm not sure how you choose which few hours are the most valuable, because that's just not how things happen. <laughs> and I can understand, I mean, where you set those and then the state knows where they fall in the program, to me, gives a more consistent, complete picture for what we're left to deal with. So you said some crashes you won't cover. So if there's a, an accident, who <coughs> covers it? So if there's a, say there's a minor parking lot crash or somebody hits a deer and they're not injured, mm -hmm. they can file a police report with the state. No, no police will respond. So they can leave the scene of the accident in the parking lot and not be in trouble? It's not really leaving the scene. Leaving the scene is, for example, if I crash into somebody's house and I don't leave any of my information, I leave. Okay. That's, that's more of a leave the scene where there's damage or injury to others. So <clears throat> these are just minor crashes where if you have a parking lot crash with somebody else, you exchange your information and then you file a crash report with the state. If you hit a deer on the road, if you need a tow truck, uh, you need some assistance calling a tow truck, we can help with that. But um, if you're not injured, then you just file a police report with the state. And Sheriff, what if you were to do it like on a three or six month trial instead of a 12 month trial for the time period? It, I would I would look at readdressing this with with the town the board at six months I don't think three months given that you're talking about we're about at the end of the school year you know get through summer and start a school year yeah even six months would be good and at the same time having lieutenant French come back say this is what's working or not working from from their perspective and ask for the town's input I would personally I would appreciate that that, I, that I'm very willing to do. Then again, I just <coughs> committed Lieutenant French. <laughs> I appreciate that. I guess I have to buy him another breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> or dinner, depending on the timing. Anybody else have any more questions? Okay. We have a contract to look at, which will...
No, we can wait till the next meeting to sign it if we need to. Um, so, following our agenda here, let's uh, approve our regular meeting minutes from May 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nobody was listed as seconding any of the motions. Is that you don't have to? You don't have to. You don't have to. Do okay. Or, I just I wondered about that because usually we do. Yep. Carol did these. I know. No, I, I didn't know like, if that it's not me to be in there. So. Okay. Motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the meeting minutes of May 15th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Uh, bills and warrants. I move that we approve payment of the following warrants. 23T account payable, $29,045.54. 20S payroll, $7,955.72. 21S payroll, $7,852.62. And 22S payroll, $7,812.17. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the uh, bills and warrants as read. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So, contract for law enforcement services. We. Did you vote on the warrants? Yes. Yeah. Just now. Yeah. Way ahead of you. I took the first and second. So what do we have for questions on that contract outside of what we've already discussed? Anything? Because the contract doesn't discuss the scheduled times, it just says 40 hours. Yeah. <coughs> Which, that's a good thing. Because then when we do a review at six months or whatever, it's not in the contract that they're on a scheduled hour. Well, I guess we'll just see how the year goes and reevaluate before the next time we the law enforcement. I mean, I supported the re reduction in the hours, but I think yeah. it's a little bit ridiculous that our recreation department is opening and our kids are going to be on Pond Road and weekends. And you're just going to be, I just think that's kind of ridiculous. I think you get what uh, is easiest for them to accomplish. It seems a little better. So, which is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's his business to run, and it's our choice to do business with him going forward or not. Is that easy? Fair enough. I need to sign the contract. Second. Moved and seconded to sign the uh, contract. Is read. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Friends of Vernon Center. 
Mark Menard, come on up. I mean, Tom. Everybody got today when you walked in the resolution from the Friends of Vernon Center, which nobody's really had time to review. So take it through, us, Scott. Thank you for hearing us, and uh, appreciate the good job you guys do. Um, I just want to give a pretty quick review of uh, what what gets us to this point, and, uh, and then maybe let Martin explain who we're hoping to go to from here. All right. Okay. A um, couple years ago, we had the rural development crew come through town and uh, basically help the town identify uh, things, direction we wanted the town to go. The town we basically settled on three items. We were looking for a gathering place, uh, store, and trails, and uh, maybe river access. And so we set up three committees at that time to try to um, facilitate that process. Uh, we came to the pretty early conclusion that the, the store gathering place uh, had common ground and so we joined those two committees together. Um, after meeting for a while we labeled ourselves the Friends of Vernon Center. Uh, we incorporated with the state and uh, registered, uh, created our bylaws, articles of um, incorporation, organized and all that. Uh, we felt, um, and so then, since then, we've had the village center designation, which um, basically is the end of uh, Governor Hunt Road here to pass the school. Um, that wasn't seen to be under our jurisdiction, so that kind of came under the planning commission a bit. Um, we've also helped to facilitate the mapping and planning of that territory. And again, uh, we're under a contract with Mark well, this that comes a little later on this agenda, but okay. Uh, so anyhow, approved yet? We've so we've been making progress, but we're we're at an impasse in probably our most important um, item, and that is getting uh, tax exempt status for us as an organization. Uh, our vision was to uh, purchase the Grange building, and we've been in dialogue with Ken Noakes. Uh, he's open to that. We made him an offer. Uh, we did not come to an agreement on that, but one of the contingencies was that we were to become a, a 501c3 tax exempt um, organization. Uh, we've tried to model our friends after basically the Friends of Algiers as they set up, you know, the Guilford Country Store and their, um, you know, downtown revitalization there, kind of trying to follow that model. Um, our reviewer at the IRS did not see us as a tax um, or as a nonprofit organ entity. They see it, they've in their minds, they see us as a for profit business. So they have not granted us the tax exemption that we've um, desired. So that makes it challenging for us in that uh, if we set up as a for profit business, then to get donations, obviously, people don't want to necessarily donate or organizations donate to your business and also with the state uh, they look favorably on the uh, nonprofits uh, as well for the state um, grants and monies like that so we've applied to the IRS and then um, we've been approaching a year in that process uh, I've had a couple of back and forths with them and have not made any progress there so we're at kind of an impasse uh, with the IRS at this point. Uh, so we're, um, I don't know, we're at an impasse, and so we don't know how to proceed forward. But, so but, but there is there is a proposed solution. So Martin's okay. going to and, and tell us some I think Tom can tell more about this, but, you know, as you understand, it's really important to get this nonprofit status. Otherwise, 
there's no point. We can't, we can't get donations. If you give us money, you can't write it off your taxes and things like that. So this is really important. The, the IRS has certain, um, certain categories of nonprofits that they will uh, approve. For example, if you're in, you know, doing something educational, you're doing something in, in health care, you're doing something in uh, caring for children or providing low-cost housing for people that need it, things like that. They don't see us as qualifying in any of those categories. So our lawyer, um, David Dunn, who is quite experienced with um, nonprofits, has he's actually the one that's gone, spoken back and forth with the agent and has come up with a, a, a solution that basically the agent suggested. He, and here's what the agent said through David, and David has concurred and has sort of written this up is that if, if the Friends of Vernon um, become kind of a, a contractor for the town, if the town assigns some responsibility for, you know, helping to develop this village center area so that we really, you know, are working at the, at doing work that is assigned by the town. And if we have a, uh, uh, so we need a contract with the town to that effect. And if we change our bylaws so that the majority of the board of uh, Friends of Vernon Center is appointed by the town, then uh, they think it would qualify for nonprofit status. And I mean, the whys and wherefores and legalities of that are a little bit beyond us, but, but the, the, this, this, this is our sort of our last uh, 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 try. In effect, we are doing that anyway with the town. We would not take steps without the town. We have worked through the town so far to get the village center designation, to get the grant for the planning process, which is really a grant to to the, to the town, you know, we're working hand in glove with the town. And so really, you know, doing this just cements that relationship, but allows us to get the nonprofit status, which if, if we um, had an opportunity, for example, to, to, to purchase the Grange building and transform that into something else, or or any other piece of property here, and if we needed to fundraise to do that, like they have done in, in Guilford for several projects, then you know we could we could do that as a nonprofit, and 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 uh, you know people could could make donations and get get tax write-offs, and, and we could get grants and things like that. Um, so so that's the proposal. And Tom, I don't know if you want to talk about the what's what's in this proposal but um right or what or what it's really that thing there right it's, right the, 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 still, um, <coughs> the friends of it's called the friends of algiers mm -hmm. and it is a nonprofit organization incidentally they had a similar set of problems before the irs finally granted them their status but so they didn't they're not Combined the, with the they do not have that arrangement with the town. No, they finally were able to get it because a component of their village center master plan was the uh, subsidized housing that the um, uh, Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust developed there, the two, the yeah. two buildings, the Todd team and the one behind it. So three buildings, actually. So I guess I didn't quite really follow that. So the idea that they had subsidized housing. That's the thing that finally was, qualified, was them. qualified them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then they could go ahead and, you know, essentially operate a store, which, you know, is sort of a for-profit right. enterprise. But, but basically they own the store. They lease out portions of it to actually three or four different businesses now. If I could clarify um, just a, a couple of points. Um, first of all, I don't think there's any real doubt about 
the Friends of Vernon Center being a nonprofit. I mean, we're incorporated in the state of Vermont as a nonprofit corporation, but the federal process is is somewhat different. It's uh, that you qualify for federal tax exemption, and the problem or the difficulty with that is they have these various definitions, various categories that you might fall into, and you have to fall into one or another. You're an educational institution, you're a church, you're this, you're that. And uh, the reviewer went through the, the list and said, I just don't see how you fit into any of these. And um, he then subsequently had a discussion with our attorney and there is a category that's called charitable uh, corporation and there are various uh, things that you can be involved in that would qualify you as a charitable corporation and the one that um, our attorney through his conversations with the IRS reviewer felt was the most likely path for us perhaps the only one uh, was that we were engaged in lessening the burdens of government and that means that uh, there are certain activities that the town would have to be involved in but for this organization being available to be assigned some duties uh, for on behalf of the town and uh, so what uh, the lawyer came up with after his discussion with the IRS was that uh, it would be beneficial for the uh, the town to pass a resolution and what you receive today is just the first draft we just received it about an hour before this meeting started so none of us has really been through it in depth but it's a starting point and we wanted to get it to you so you would have a chance to look it over and then presumably we would have further discussion in, in the near future and perhaps communicating through Michelle. Um, so one thing would be a, a, a resolution by the town saying that uh, it has um, these burdens uh, with regard to establishing a village center uh, and if it weren't for outside help, it would incur certain expenses and use of uh, employee time and so forth. And that, uh, therefore, it will enter into an agreement with the Friends of Vernon Center to assign us to do some of that work. Uh, this isn't in return for any payment, it's just we would assume the responsibility for having the meetings, the, the public gatherings, and the uh, uh, liaising with the consultant and so forth, and then reporting back to the select board and the planning commission would be involved and so forth. Um, and and uh, the resolution would say, and therefore we assign these responsibilities and we'll enter into an agreement with the Friends of Vernon Center. Uh, and that's to sort of document for the IRS that there really is a burden on the government and that the Friends of Vernon Center are going to assist the, the town by taking on these responsibilities. There's then going to be a second document, and I hope to have it this evening, but the lawyer didn't finish drafting it, so hopefully we'll have it tomorrow and can get it to you as soon as possible. And that would just detail the various things that the town wants us to do in managing this process. And then thirdly, uh, it's felt that in order for the IRS to be satisfied, the town would have to uh, demonstrate control over our organization by having the authority to appoint the members of the board. Now, I've heard both a majority of the board members, and in the draft here it refers to all of the board members. So that's still a, an open topic. Uh, but the executive committee of the Friends of Vernon Center has met and agreed that we'd be willing to 
uh, go to our full board and propose that we change the bylaws and instead of having our board of directors elected by the previous board members we would present uh, a proposed list of candidates to the select board and you would be free to uh, appoint all or some or none of the suggested people and uh, and exercise your uh, choice in, in who gets appointed to the board and um, so that's basically where we stand at this point um, this is all in aid of getting the 501c3 so that we can continue to uh, carry out the project as has been envisioned thus far the the lawyer seems to think we were unlucky in who we drew to review our application but i also understand from people that have been through this process that for some situations it's a very simple and quick process but for most it's like this we keep getting additional letters requesting additional information and uh, documents and so forth so we're under a fairly strict deadline um, and so we're anxious for every reason to push this process forward uh, but it it will involve in addition to answering some additional questions that they've uh, put to us it, it will mean uh, asking you to consider and hopefully pass the resolution in a form that's uh, satisfactory to you and then uh, to enter into a contract a again when you get it so uh, you've had one IRS reviewer turn this down well he hasn't turned us down the, it's the process is dragging on we're kind of at, at our last opportunity to convince him and so the, the he's he's not given us a negative determination letter he just keeps saying it's looking difficult the the path forward is is narrowing the lawyer seems to be fairly confident that this will work based on his several conversations now with the but, uh, uh, so the reviewer. Algiers they obviously had a different IRS reviewer and it was some years ago so priorities and uh, I'm so just forth. curious if you kind of said okay and waited six months if you can get a different IRS <laughs> reviewer well, well that is a possibility but of course our original application would be the second person on, would on the second yeah. person would probably not only review it but support that first be sort of a negative uh, inference I think uh, from the withdrawing so we prefer not to go that way yeah, we're also just anxious to get on with the the job at hand we since you're going to be considering the contract with the uh, consultants uh, it, it's we're anxious to just be in a position to move on so give me an idea, you know, I, I, I know that the current vision of the Friends of Vernon is, is a cafe. Outside of that, what is the immediate plans for the Friends of Vernon? So, full stop, because that is not the immediate vision of okay. the Friends, okay? The immediate vision of the Friends, the, 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 the principal per purpose that for which we were formed was to uh, pursue the idea of establishing a village center in Vernon, which Vernon has never really had, unless you count South Vernon, which is mostly in Massachusetts. And so there's never really been a destination place, a village green with some houses around it, which is, which is, you know, the village of, of Vernon. And so out of the, the VCRD process, this was one of the ideas that really rose to the top as something that people wanted to pursue. There was discussion as to where that area should be. Then there was the, the village center designation process, which you guys all signed off on various steps of that. It needed a plan, town plan amendment. All the reasoning of why a town center is in that. Uh, uh, you know, we got the designation, we got the grant. And so the, really the immediate next work of the town, it's really the town that got the grant. So it's the town's work, but the friends are stepping up to say, we will help you with this in a big way. 
the next step is is a pretty long detailed planning process that's going to take to the end of the year and that's the other item on the agenda is to approve the contract for that um, which will end up with a you know a master plan for this village area and a set of recommendations on how to go forward and actually get whatever the vision is get get the, the uh, a village built and part of those recommendations does include funding opportunities. I'm going to add that. Yeah, how to pay for it. How to get it paid yeah. for it. Yeah. So, so I guess, I mean, I, I'll be very honest. I don't understand what a village center is. I don't understand why it's important. Um, uh, and I don't understand what we're building and what the vision is well, then for you a should village participate. center. You should participate so. in the process. But what a village center is, if, if I say to you Townsend, if I say to you Newfane, if I say to you Putney, the thing that comes into your mind immediately is the village center of those, of those towns. There is no such place. And it, and it does for me here as well, with, without having a state designation. If I think about Vernon, I think about the, the town office, the village, you know, green area out here with a memorial. If, uh, if I came into Vernon and drove around with no knowledge of it, I would know that this is kind of the, you know, town center because it's where our town hall is and town hall typically is not a village. But it's got a cornfield in the middle of it. So, so I guess, I guess that's what I'm, I guess that's what I'm saying is, is what are we building well, with that our is village? What, that is what the next phase of this is going to be. We put that out to bid. We got seven different proposals. We interviewed four different uh, outfits. We chose one, and we have a, a contract on the table later in this agenda to be approved to, to create that plan, to answer your question, what is it going to be? What is it going to look like? Yeah. That's then that. why do we need it? Is no, that, not that, why that. do we need it? Because we've already crossed that bridge. We crossed that bridge with the uh, uh, VCRD planning process a couple of years ago. I, I went through the VCRD planning process. I didn't find it terribly helpful personally for anything in the town, um, but it, it was what it was. We used $40,000 of money to, to talk in a circle, which, you know, there's some good things that came out of it. The, you know, the trails and things up in the town forest got done better than probably what they would have if, you know, those, those talks didn't happen. Um, and I guess I, I, I I'm, I'm not. Sure you disagree that there should I, be I'm a not town center, but I'm that, not but seeing that, the. I guess I'm not seeing the vision. I, I'm not seeing what. I'm not seeing the benefit to the town. To to doing this is to begin with, which you know is is neither here nor there because but but if, if you guys I need to remind you all of you that you you voted to approve a an amendment to the town plan with detailed language as to why this was a good idea, why the town wants to pursue the the, the, the development of a town center. Okay. Um, among those reasons was, for example, you have a school that's sized for 300 students. You have 165 or so students in that school. Okay, uh, so 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 if you develop a, a, a an area of, of housing and businesses that surrounds that that school, you can help to fill that school up without really, you know, spending a whole lot more money. You have to build an extra school just because you've built a village. Um, so you're it, talking it, about you're talking about private housing. You're talking about public housing. Again, these are things to be determined in this planning process that we're about to go into. The, you know the look and feel and exactly what's there. Nobody is dictating that. That's that is something that the town, everybody in the town, is invited to participate in figuring out what that is. But but you know I hope we don't have to go back to square one and say, why do we need this? Because, you know, y you, all, you all voted several times that we do need this and we want to pursue this process. Sure. 
I think the idea is that through the series of meetings that we had a um, year and a half ago, two years ago, um, <clears throat> there was a large expression of interest by the townspeople that they were interested in developing a, a village center and people had their own ideas of what that might mean. Uh, but it brought us to this point where we now have, we're on the verge of engaging professional assistance to work with the townspeople again in a series of public meetings uh, to envision what would go into the, the town center and it, it might include various kinds of businesses and, uh, and other amenities. Uh, <clears throat> where people would meet with their neighbors uh, and there'd be places to eat or various possibilities and the the job of the consultants as I understand is to listen to the suggestions and to kind of affirm or suggest to people that this is realistic and this is how this could be accomplished and this is how that could be accomplished and have you thought about having this in a village center and so forth and, and hopefully by the end of the year there would be a relatively concrete plan which I'm sure over time will go on being uh, changed and uh, but but as time goes on the village center area would start to be populated with you know cafe meeting place and other things that uh, the townspeople have indicated and will indicate going forward that they uh, they want to see in this area I think for me it's you know the, the towns change you know and to me it's a, and it's an opportunity for us to be proactive and trying to map out our future rather than just let it letting it happen we can be proactive and say where do we want to go as a town and as different opportunities come up we can as um, Tom just says, you know, they can fit into the puzzle and we get, we get a chance to, you know, think, plan, and execute that plan rather than just staying back and waiting to see what happens. And so I think that that's why I think it's a neat opportunity for us to um, be actively planning out the future of our town and what we want this town to be. I don't disagree that Vernon definitely needs life brought back to it. Um, but I'm not sure why we would be doing this when you guys, the it's not even completed through the IRS yet as far as you don't have denial or an approval. So why are we? Because because this, so, so back to the, the issue of this agenda item. Um, the IRS needs to see this in order to approve you know, it's, it's the cart before the horse. So we need, we, the IRS needs to see, you know, this sort of assignment by the town to the friends of certain responsibilities uh, in order to uh, approve the nonprofit status. It's, yeah. it's essentially piggybacking off the town's nonprofit and us right. saying that we need the additional help to move to forward with this process of development. But, you know, this is not complete right now, okay? We need at least two more items from the lawyer. So I think, you know, without protracting this, we could protract this discussion further, but, but I think if we could agree in a couple of weeks, you know, or really in a couple of days to, to get you all of the documentation that, that we're asking for the sign-off on, and then we could, you know, discuss that we could work with Michelle on any specific language in between, and then at your next meeting, you know, ask for your blessing on that agreement. Yeah, I, I guess the other, I guess the other piece that kind of concerns me um, in this development, because I, throughout the VCRD process and and throughout you guys' talking tonight and all that kind of thing, I, I hear the word cafe and store and and all that kind of thing, which you know, thankfully we've we've we have a store mm -hmm. in Vernon now, which is great. Um, we have a couple potential cafes that are much further along 
than what the Friends of Vernon are. There's, you know, people have purchased property and are or inherited property or whatever the case may be to open a cafe of their own. Um, so that's a big concern for me to have a publicly funded cafe competing against a privately funded cafe or store um, in the town of Vernon. That's that's a big concern for me through this process and I understand it fits kind of the village center model in our current store. It doesn't fit in that village center triangle. I don't think it doesn't extend that far it's down. a little bit outside of it, but so look, this is the friends, the last thing the friends want to do is to pursue something that's going to put somebody else out of business or that competes with, with them. You know, uh, if, if, if there's, if there's, you know, by the time we ever get this plan done and, and acquire some property, uh, if there's already a thriving store and there's a thriving cafe, wonderful. Let's figure out what, what other things we need and that we want to put into this triangle here. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Sure. I, think, I think this is just to facilitate your work. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. We'll be back when we get to, we'll be back on this issue. <coughs> And we get all the right documentation to you. And um, but we'll be back here in a couple of agenda items on the on the SE group uh, contract. Town office lawn care. <coughs> Where are we? Well, the are school we and Sally were going to be here to explain how. Oh, that's it's right. They were, work, but yeah. it's um, they're, they're not. But. I can give you a brief overview. The way I understand it is that we will invoice the town or the school quarterly. Mm -hmm. So they are going to do it just in a little different way. And it has been vetted through accountants and the school system to make sure that it's all Perfect. very legal. I will have the workers come. Then next year, we're just going to have to evaluate how we're going to do it differently, but for this year, that's the crux of it. Perfect. We're really happy with the yep. solution. Okay, good. Cemetery deed. William, I can't pronounce the last name. I'm not going to try. Moved and seconded to approve the cemetery deed for William Pizzo. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Center Master Plan Consultant. You guys should have just stayed up here. <laughs> we tried to typically move pretty quick through our agenda items. So, so this is really, uh, technically, this is not a friend's request. This is a request from the Planning Commission, okay? Because this contract, the grant is to the town, planning grant. Uh, the um, uh, Planning Commission did the, as I mentioned, did the um, outreach. I think we sent out 30, um, 30 requests for proposals thereabouts. We got seven proposals, which everybody was amazed at, in the regional, places like that. We, we talked to four of them. Um, we selected the SE 
group, and that was a unanimous decision, not too much, uh, I think Jean was at, were you at the interviews? Um, uh, um, uh, a unanimous decision. So the contract that you have is, is a fairly simple, straightforward contract. It has a few pages of um, boilerplate that the state requires, since this is a state um, grant, but basically the contract says, you know, we will, we will work with you and develop this plan. It has a, a, um, a completion date of December 31st, which is quicker than we had requested. I think we had said January 30th, I think, in our RFP. Anyway, um, that's the proposal. It has it starting on June 1st? Yeah. And it right has, here we are. It has typos in it. The, um, the Planning Commission approved it at their last May meeting. But just, um, um, typos don't invalidate the contract. I know. It just jumps out. Danny's really good, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. And th this is utilizing the grant that's already been had, basically, right? Yep. Just for everybody's clarification. The grant, which has been matched a little bit by the Planning Commission and mostly by the Friends of Vernon Center. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve and sign this contract for personal services. A second. second. Moved and seconded to sign the contract for the Village Center Master Plan Consultant. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We just need Josh. Thanks very much. Just me. Thank you. Oh. Just you. Uh, I feel special. Contract. Which has been presented for exactly what they said it would be and exactly what was approved at town meeting, which is $51,421.86 for the year. Mr. Chairman, I move that we sign the contract with Rescue Inc. Second. Moved and seconded to sign Rescue Inc.'s contract. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Again, just Josh. Solar, solar array. Are we taking both of these all at once, or is that a second? This a second line item to that? Kevin, it, Dave. It's another represent. signature of a contract, so I'd like to discuss that separately from. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, so it's kind of separate. All right. Okay. Come on. Up. Good evening. Nice to see you all again. Um, so I'm here for two reasons. Uh, one is that. Several weeks ago, uh, we sent out a 45-day notice of the intent to file for a, a Certificate of Public Good application for a 500-kilowatt project um, on the parcel owned by Christine Fredericks and Steve Zaluzny. Uh, that's the same par parcel off of West Road where, they're large, uh, where they operate a large gravel pit. So this is an opportunity for me to answer any questions and to take feedback. Uh, pertaining to the 45-day notice. The other thing is that recent research for me, uh, by, by, by me, um, has turned up evidence that a fair amount of that site that we're looking at actually is a reclaimed gravel pit. I actually had to go up to Springfield and dig, dig through the Act 250 archives to, 
to really establish that. But part of it isn't. And so uh, as a result, um, I'm, I'm requesting that the select board sign a letter of support for that as a preferred site for a solar array. Um, I attended the Planning Commission meeting on the 23rd of May, and they already did sign a letter to this effect. They visited the site, we looked around, we, we um, explained what we were interested in doing, and they did sign a letter, letter of support for that as a preferred site. So um, that's why I'm requesting that of the select board as well. Um, like I said, though, it's, it's kind of a, an ambiguous site because part of the land does qualify as a reclaimed gravel pit, and therefore that would also make it qualify as a preferred site. But I, to be on the absolute safe side, I think we need to, <coughs> to um, request a letter from you as well. What's the land being used for right now? Right now it's a, it's a field uh, alongside the, the hall road that goes into the main pit. And um, apparently there have been some times in the past where it was used as a hay field. Um, but it's apparently not very productive. Um, there's a farmer named Brown on West Road that used it for that purpose, but he's not using it for that purpose right now. So it's basically just a... When was the last time it was used for that? I don't know which year. I, th I understand it was a few years ago. Where the uh, solar array is going to sit, is it in the area that would be considered a preferred site, or is it in the previously used agriculture area? Well. It's my understanding that, that the previously, previously used agricultural area is on top of the reclaimed pit. Um, I've got some drawings and so forth. We can get into detail if you want. But um, the, the, the previously reclaimed pit includes the road itself. And the road used to go around it and now it goes over the top of the, the fill. Um, and uh, the array would sort of straddle um, the filled in pit and, and maybe some other land that wasn't excavated. I, I don't know for sure because the records are so sketchy. Mm -hmm. I have drawings of um, the reclamation plan, but I only have uh, literally a, a, um, a uh, hand sketched map signed and dated by, Lo by Linda Matson at uh, ANR on uh, February 7th, 2001. And, uh, the uh, District 2 Act 250 coordinator has said that she will she will write a letter, um, I guess, attesting to that as, as accurate evidence that the reclamation was completed. So I, I guess, if I, if I understand you right, you think you could get preferred site with without signatures, you're just doing it as a kind of a safeguard? No, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, we're, we're finding that, that the the process of getting uh, the Public Utility Commission to agree that a site is preferred according to, to one of the definitions mm -hmm. is, is a little hit or miss. And sometimes if the array is not 100% on the reclaimed pit, for example, or the capped landfill, then it, f it fails that test. And that, that's why um, you know, we're also approaching the Planning Commission, the Town, and the Regional Commission. I was at the Wyndham Regional Commission meeting this morning, just before this, yeah. yeah. Um, and they agreed to, they voted in favor of signing a letter if the select board also agreed that that was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Does this impact the um, deer wintering area? The deer wintering, if, if we were to clear in some of the deer wintering area, we would also set up a, a mitigation area to, to offset any clearing the deer wintering area with a minimum ratio of two to one. But do you have to go through that 250 to, ch to change that? Oh, I, actually, I don't, now I know what you're, you're bringing up. No, we would not at all go into the Act 250 deer wintering area mitigation area. Okay. Um, but there is some other area that's not mapped as a deer yard. But when you go in there and look around you, you know, I did it with a biologist a couple weeks ago, it turns out that it actually is active deer yard. Um, that would not impinge on the Act 250 deer yard. Uh, but we would have to set up a separate mitigation area the easement with um, Steve and Christine okay. for anything that we cleared. Right. And that will be in the, 
actual CPG application materials that you'll also get. Chris, a question? My opinion hasn't changed. Any of this? Okay. Jeff? No. Same. That's a question. Jean? Uh, I understand that that is pretty rough field to do anything mm -hmm. in. It's very rough. That's right, because you joined us, didn't you? Yeah, but my son was out there and it sounded like he blew up something when he, <laughs> when he hit something in that field, so he's never going back. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not good out there. So, seems like a good use. So, I make a motion that we send that letter as requested. Second. Moved and seconded to sign the solar array request from Green Lancer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. We have your letter. Thanks. Anything else? Um, nope. Okay, good. Thanks so much. So the next item on the agenda regarding the solar array is Facey Goss and McPhee is requesting to represent Green Lantern. They are also the representing party for us in the purchase of, um, excuse me, in the sale of the Vermont Yankee property to North Star. Now this letter does, I had them rewrite their request. So they have agreed to go project by project because Green Lantern is a, a repeated client of theirs. Um, so this only covers this one West Road solar project. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's pretty much you saying yes, we, we understand that if there is a conflict of interest, they will represent Green Lantern and, and dump the town's interest. There's no reason that North Star's issues, which is what we have them for, should coincide at all or intersect with Green Lantern, but just in case they do, this is informing the town that they will not represent the town, they will represent Green Lantern. How long does this last? Because my only, my only concern within it is if, you know, we decide to take a portion of the land and we purchase it as a town or whatever, which this is all, you know, kind of big picture, and we want to put a solar array on a portion of it, and we contract with Green Lantern to do said work. Are we coming into a conflict of interest there? Or am I just getting tired? No, this only pertains to the West Road right now. So once Perfect. West Road is, if it, has, if it doesn't pertain to the West Road project, this contract does not. Cool. Into it. All right. And, and they really, they do permitting. For, yeah. for Green Lake. I understand a motion to uh, uh -huh. accept the contract for Casey Goss and McPhee. So moved. Second. <laughs> moved and seconded to accept the uh, request for Casey Goss and McPhee to represent Green Lantern on the West Road project. Just, Josh. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The top one. Right here. Yeah, Mr. Sorry. It's okay. The stickers never help me anyway. It always messes me up worse. That's all. have to bring that. Okay, so we're all set there. Um, so you're all set, my friend. Thanks. Have a good day. Uh, Steve's given out to use resignation from the um, uh, Connecticut River Joint Commission. He is no longer going to participate in that, so we need to accept his resignation. And I believe we have a short little email in here from Andy White who would like to take up that position that Steve is leaving. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept Steve's resignation with regrets and appoint Andy to that position. Second. Moved and seconded to accept Steve, uh, Steve Skibnowski's resignation to the Connecticut River Joint Commission and accept Andy White as his replacement. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Dog catcher. 
We do have a um, Steve Skidnowski has expressed his interest in being a dog catcher um, and does have a vehicle and a kennel that he can put in the vehicle to transport animals. I did not post the position though. So, because he just sort of fell on our doorstep. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, I wanted to bring that to the Slack board and ask if you want me to still go ahead and post it, or if you would just like to accept Steve. He does have experience with animals, um, and he's willing to do it um, for the time being. He um, uh, also has expre uh, expressed interest in upgrading our current kennel, which exists for a temporary storage at that town garage at his own expense. I move that we accept that, and so especially with the dog sheriff's dog car, uh, contract. Yeah. Um, yep. So I say we accept his and uh, post it. Second. Moved and seconded to accept Steve Skibnowski as our dog catcher going forward. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, Vernon Historians Insurance Discussion and Lease. So we all got 6,000 emails back and forth over the last few weeks about this thing. God, I must not be on that chain. Yes. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I could forward it all to you. No, I, I, no. You I got the gist of it. I sent okay. my email, so please do not respond. Yeah. So um, I, I, I'm trying to think of where we are at this point in this whole ridiculous discussion. Um, but I, I think they're waiting to get together as a committee to look at everything. Um, we can accept um, what we currently have, and then if they don't approve parts of it, we can go back to the negotiating table and just rewrite it. It's not, it's not that difficult to do. Right. But it's better for us to have something in place right away than for us to wait for them to, uh, for another month for them to get their committee together in my opinion because so, we can make changes to it so because that opened what this past sunday it was open, wasn't mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so how does that all work insurance wise as it sits right now tell us okay. well they have said that they are going to get it but as I of have right not now seen it is. but as of right now it's all us. okay okay um and and in this lease is that they have to have it in addition to a waiver that says the town is not liable for any items that are in the building. Mm -hmm. So so we've kind of, instead of making them sign separate things, we've combined them. Oh, them. And it's up for a dollar a year. Do we, because I know that we had discussed at the last meeting whether somebody could kind of double down on that with their insurance and to come in after us. Should there be any wording in here about that that protects us? That's part of the anybody can sue anybody for anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and we're always going to be liable because we own the building. This protects us as much as we possibly can. Right. This is as good as we can. I move that we accept this with a change of the date. Um, actually, I do have an updated one here okay. that has the date. Did you change oh, the name? June 20th. I did change the name. Okay. But this is effective June 1st. You want it effective one? Well, when you said May. Yeah. This one. So this one says June 1st. Okay. That's fine. June 1st is fine. Okay. And this one's the updated with the new name. So I'm really excited. I didn't feel like I needed to copy it. No. So Sandy made the motion. Will we have a second? Okay, I'll second. <laughs> second. Second. Uh, all those in favor of uh, signing the insurance, or excuse me, the lease as uh, written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Just, just. Gosh, I feel so important. So, public participation agenda items only. Mr. Root, do you have anything to say? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Correspondence of town admin report.
Oh, my report, sorry. Okay, I have a couple of things. Um, the town picnic is a go. And the organizer would love to have a circus in the park across the street. Now, we, it's a public area, so we don't really need, we don't have a building use agreement or anything. Just wanted to let the select board know that that was going to happen. That's in the Huckle Hill She area. said that it was going to be at the gazebo in place of the car show. This that, gazebo? Yes, this gazebo. Okay. In that area. So you're not going to have a car show now? It was in, right, right. Fell the car show fell through. Now it's a circus. Okay. So it's going to be over in the park. <laughs> it's getting to be more of a circus all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She just like runs by my door and tells me stuff. As Suck ass! <laughs> um, it's in the morning of that day. Clowns. We've already talked about the generous donations that we've received for fireworks from Great River Hydro and North Star. I just want to recognize them both as being really responsible corporate neighbors to the town of Vernon. Um, Stone Environmental will be coming into Vernon to do water testing at all of our catch basin areas. So if you see them out there taking samples, they are really checking for illicit dumping. So if any residents are wondering what's going on, that's it. Um, we um, have closed out our safety grant for the state in this past month, so we're looking for that influx of money to come in. Um, and we've been asked by Great River Hydro, actually, in light of the fact that we have cut down our sheriff patrol hours if anybody who's a upstanding responsible citizen happens to be driving by the Vernon Beach in the evening hours just take a drive through and come back out any activity that's in there lights activity will be helpful in making sure that there's no illicit activity going on um, can you can you back up for one second the safety grant was that the that was for the M emergency operations center Okay. Did we get a grant for the a safety grant for the lighting at the pool? I know you and I have talked about that. Did that we, come through? It wasn't a grant. It was a like a match from efficiency, efficiency for Ma. I think. It okay. Was I like, thought the, I thought there was there an was additional one we were working on or something. Oh no, we did not get that. We didn't get that one. Okay. It was written. We just didn't get it. It okay. was a that was a long shot. I tried. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry, we were, I failed. I know. I really no, tried well, to no, get I, that. I know we were talking about how we could. Thank you for of, calling out my failures. Sorry, so. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought we got it when you said the safety <laughs> grant. I thought you got it because no, I know we were trying to like no, put a slant on it I, that it's I for the safety not. of the children and. No, I I tried. <laughs> it did not work. We tried. Yeah, yeah. That was. Thank you, though. You're welcome. You're welcome. Your face that. is kind of red. Yeah. <laughs> I don't tell you the grants I don't get. Well, um, no, I just thought it was that one because we said. It wasn't okay. Grant. Let's <laughs> moving <head>. on. <laughs> and we're walking. Um, and so the other thing is, we are. If it's okay with you, it doesn't fall really into the five hundred dollar mark for the select board, but um, money available in the supply. Um, office supplies, if and there's no major objections, can we buy a folding machine? Which will not only go because we have three appraisals coming up or reassessments. Oh. And it's a lot of mailing. And apparently, in the past, we borrowed machines oh. to send out mailings. And now, if we buy our own, which is it's about $200, then we can use it for taxes. And Cut down so that folds like letter? Cut down on labor. Yeah. It, it'll fold. Yes, yeah. and the library can use it. Too. I just going to say, let's go on with that. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't cost anything to lend it out. So, unless there's any strong objections, we're going to go ahead and buy a folding machine. It sounds super exciting. Doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, that, that's my notes. When, when I do my I know kids, that you so. are all tired, and now that you know my failure, um, you have all <laughs> of your <laughs> drawers. We know how you tried. I do try. Um, Sorry. I getting getting back to the folding I mean, machine. The, no, no, oh. I don't care about that. <laughs> Just the the dam. Um, if anybody hasn't been by there, they've actually done quite a bit of work. They've fixed up some of the picnic tables and cleaned it up. There's trash cans down there, which hasn't been recently. So. And they're going to work on ways, other things to do to make sure that it remains a family friendly area down there but, but they're the in first the ones in a very long time to do anything down there so well and, and kind of a side note to that you know I, I understand that their concerns 
you know, with, with having less and less police presence. When we had lots and lots of police presence is when we had the most problems. So I don't think, you know, that we're going to see anything worse for wear down there mm -hmm. be, because of that specific fact that we have less police presence. That's just my opinion. So. Second constable is works part time for the sheriff's department, doesn't he? Or does he not? No, I have no idea. I don't know. Just think we could utilize him. And they didn't ask anybody <laughs> to jump out of their cars and do anything. <laughs> Just the act of driving down and turning around and coming out. Uh, there's enough guys that do that. Too, <laughs> I think that that this should be okay. But anyway, it was a request that came in. Well, now that Directly Andy's on this thing, he's on a river all the time. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. He is the upstanding citizen that and, we were looking and for. And Andy definitely takes care of that beach. So. Yeah. Anyway, so upcoming meeting schedule, WRC Energy and Natural Resources Committee meeting Thursday, June 7th. Uh, the Hebert celebration, uh, basically they're doing a little thing at the school for Mike and Deb for all the years that they've spent on the school board. Uh, will be Thursday, June 14th at 2 o'clock at the school. Um, and you guys can read the rest. I'm not reading all these to you. Did anybody want to fly or anything? I have a few. Okay. We're adjourned. Uh,